Father, we do thank you so much for the freedoms that we have in this land, Lord. We thank you for the freedom that we can come and celebrate the birth of Jesus Christ, that we can worship you, O God, for you are faithful and true, that we can do that without persecution. And Father, we thank you so much that when we believe that you seal us with the power of your Spirit, that God comes to live inside of us, to protect us, to guide us, to give us everything that we need to equip us for this life, Lord, sealing us to be children of God. We just are amazed and, and are in awe of you, Lord. We just thank you and praise you in the name of Jesus. Amen. Grab your bulletins first and grab a pen. And I want you to write these three things down so that you can think about them. <clears throat> the first thing is what we are. What are we? Children of God. So write that down, what we are. And we're going to find out today from Scripture, not from me, but from Scripture, from God's Word. Number two, what we shall be. Children of God. So here's the third one. What should we be now? Children of God. Last week we talked about enemies of God, so what's the opposite of an enemy of God? It's a child of God, the, child, the children of God. But yet so many times the children of God, we found that out, they live as enemies of God still because they don't give up their love affair with this world. So they commit adultery against God and the love that He has for them. 1 John 3, 1 says, See what great love the Father has lavished on us. How that we should be called children of God. And that is what we are. The reason the world does not know us, us is that it did not know Him. Wow. John could have wrote anything in here, but he wrote that we are children of God. He could have said we're blessed. He could have said we're saved. He could have said we're redeemed. But he called us children of God. That just blows my mind every time I think about it. I read that in Scripture that I'm not just saved, I'm not just redeemed, I'm not just going to heaven, but I am God's child, that I can cry out to Him and say, Father, even more so I can cry out to Him and say, Daddy, because He's my Daddy. He wants a personal relationship with me. He who said, let there be stars, and then there's more stars than our minds can comprehend, of bigger and more capacity than we can comprehend. We, we can't even think even begin to think what God is capable of, who He is. And yet, if we believe in Jesus Christ, we have a personal relationship with Him. We get to call Him Father. Last week we talked about uh, enemies of God, and we looked at James. In James chapter 4, verse 4, it says, You adulterous people, don't you know that friendship with the world means enmity with God? Therefore, anyone who chooses to be a friend of the world becomes an enemy of God. So many times, like I said, we won't give up the love affair of this world, but this life means nothing and it will be over just like that, quicker than I can snap my fingers in comparison to the life we have in all eternity. And Jesus said, repent for the kingdom of God is at hand. That means it's now. If you accept and believe in Him, you become part of that kingdom now. You're just still living out your life on this earth. That's why Jesus says that you must be born again. Because the old self is dead and gone. We're not under the power of sin anymore. That doesn't have any control over us. We read on in James chapter 4 that if we come to Jesus Christ, if we submit ourselves and resist the devil, that he will flee from us. Wow. Because we have the power of God living inside of us. Romans 5, verses 6 through 11 say, You see, at just the right time, when we were still powerless... Christ died for the ungodly. Very rarely will anyone die for a righteous person, though for a good person someone might possibly dare to die. But God demonstrated His own love for us in this. While we were still sinners, enemies, Christ died for us. Since we have now been justified by His blood, how much more shall we be saved from God's wrath through Jesus, through Him? For if while we were God's enemies... We were reconciled to him through the death of his son. How much more, having been reconciled, shall we be saved through his life? I can't imagine. Not only this, but we also boast in God 
through our Lord Jesus Christ, through whom we have now received reconciliation. Do you boast in Jesus Christ? Do you tell people daily of what God has done for you and how much He loves you? Or do you boast in other things? We need to be madly in love with God because of what He does for us. That He adopts us as His own child. That He sent His own Son to die for us. And we need to boast and proclaim the gospel message. Colossians chapter 1 verses 15 through 23. Read, The Son is the image of the invisible God, the firstborn over all creation. All of creation. For in Him all things were created, things in heaven and things on earth, things that we don't even know or about whatsoever or can comprehend. They're watching what's going on right now. They're watching God as He pours out His love lavishly on His children. And they're watching to see if we will respond back in love or if we'll stay as enemies of God, even though we are a child of God. <clears throat> From, from in, for in Him all things were created, things in heaven and on earth, visible and invisible, whether thrones or powers or rulers or authorities. All things have been created through Him and for Him. He is before all things, and in Him all things hold together. And He is the head of the body, the church. He is the beginning and the firstborn from among the dead, so that in everything He might have the supremacy. For God was pleased to have all His fullness dwell in Him and through Him to reconcile to Himself all things. We don't even have a clue what this cosmic battle is, what's going to happen when, we, when Jesus Christ sets everything right and we spend forever with Him. Man, is there going to be rejoicing. I, I try to comprehend it and I try to think about it, but it just is beyond my scope of my mental capacity. What a joyous day that that's going to be. <clears throat> Whether things on earth or things in heaven, by making peace through His blood shed on the cross. Once you were alienated from God and were enemies in your minds because of your evil behavior. But now He has reconciled you by Christ's physical body through death to present, your, present you holy in His sight. Without blemish and free from accusation, if you continue in your faith, established and firm, and do not move from the hope held out in the gospel. This is the gospel that you heard and that has been proclaimed to every creature under heaven and of which I, Paul, have become a servant. Wow, the love of God. I challenge you to go home and study those scriptures, to look at them, to say, why would someone of this authority and power and dominion choose to love me, let alone call me his child? We serve an awesome God. Hebrews chapter 10, verses 19 through 31. Therefore, brothers and sisters, or believers, since we have confidence to enter the most holy place to approach this God by the blood of Jesus, by a new and living way opened for us through the curtain that is His body. And since we have a great priest over the house of God, let us draw near to God with a sincere heart, and with full assurance that faith brings, having our hearts again sprinkled to cleanse us from a guilty conscience, and having our bodies washed with pure hearts. Let us hold unswervingly to the hope that we prof profess. For he who prof promised is faithful, and let us consider how we may spur or provoke each other to action, how we may spur one another towards love and good deeds. That's what we're supposed to be doing. Not giving up meeting together as some are in habit of doing, but encouraging one another, and all the more as you see the day approaching. If we deliberately keep on sinning after we have received the knowledge of truth, no sacrifice for sin is left, but only a fearful expectation of judgment, raging fire, that will consume the enemies of God. Anyone who rejected the law of Moses died without mercy on the testimony of two or three witnesses. How much more severely do you think someone deserves to be punished who trampled, on the son, trampled the Son of God underfoot? Who was treated as an unholy thing, the blood of the covenant that sanctified them? And who has insulted the Spirit of grace? For we know Him who, who said, It is mine to avenge, I will repay. And again the Lord will judge His people. 
It is a dreadful thing to fall in the hands of the living God. Debbie, do you see anybody say about Willow that she resembled her mother or father? That's what we hear quite often. Oh, Kira looks just like you or looks just like Jacob. I see the resemblance in your family. Do they see the resemblance of your heavenly father in your life? Do you carry the attributes and walk the walk of Jesus Christ? Because a child is supposed to resemble their parents. So how do these verses apply to you? Would you change anything if you know Jesus was coming back this year? What about if he was coming back this week? What about if he was coming back tomorrow? Would you change the way you lived your life? Now I realize there's some extra urgency in there that I need to go tell this person because I know that. But the thing is, is we don't know that it won't happen tomorrow. So we need to live our lives like, that, like it will. We need to live our lives as we are children of God because that is what we are. I know it's hard to understand, it's hard to believe, it's amazing that God would love us so much that He would want to adopt us to His very own. That means that we inherit everything of God. We are His children. We're not alienated, we are His children. And He comes to us as a loving Father, what a perfect loving Father. I know how much I love my only child, but I can't imagine how much more God loves me. Because I think I love my son pretty, pretty good. I think I'm a pretty good dad, but I stink in comparison. I fell so miserably. How much more is my heavenly Father going to love me? And what am I going to inherit when I get there? So why could I not live as a child of God today? James warned us about adultery against God, having a love affair, and he called us enemies. In Romans, Paul reminded us of God's love and why Christ was sent to die for us, even while we were still enemies. In Hebrews, we're told that those who deliberately keep on sinning, that they should fear the coming judgment, how dreadful it is for the enemies of God. Children of God should be exact opposite of what we learned about enemies of God last week. They should resemble their heavenly Father. They should look like their siblings, Jesus Christ. I think we fail to see how much God loves us. Because if we did, we wouldn't have a care about this world. Paul's a good example of this. And he said, for, for me to live is good, but to die is gain. Because he wanted so much to go on and inherit what he was going to be able to inherit. But he said, I need to live here. I need to proclaim the gospel. Therefore, I'm obligated. I'm ready and I'm not ashamed of the gospel of Christ because it is the power that brings salvation to anyone who believes. It's all about Jesus. You know our doctrine. <laughs> It's all about Jesus and how we respond to that. 1 Thessalonians 5, 16 through 18 says, Rejoice always. Pray continually. Give thanks in all circumstances. Why? For this is God's will for you in Christ Jesus. So let's break that down. Rejoice how often? Always. Do you do that? How about praying? Pray Continually. How much do you pray? How is your prayer life? Give thanks in all circumstances. Not just when there's something that you can be thankful for, but in all circumstances. Know that He's in control, that He loves you. And the things that you're going through are to bring you to Him. Do you understand what it means to be God's daughter or God's son? Just try to get a glimpse of it. Because if you just get a glimpse of it, that's all you'll need. You can hide yourself in the rock as he passes by and you'll glow in his radiance. All we need is just a little glimpse. So back to 1 John chapter 3. Verse 1 said, See, or King James Version says, Behold, it means open your eyes, look, acknowledge, realize, and know. Not just with your eyes, but with all of your senses. Pay attention to what is revealed. Examine it and come to a conclusion of yourself. Cherish it and respond to it. What are we to see? What great love, or the King James Version says, manner of love. When ships would come in off the Mediterranean to Caesarea or some of the other coasts, they would watch to see what ship was coming in to try to identify that ship. 
Because if they saw the style of the ship or saw the flag, they would know from what country it came from. So they would know what to expect. Were these people hostile? Were they coming to trade? Oh, they're coming to trade, but this is these people. We know what they're like. They're, they're nice people. Or, oh, they're hard to deal with. What manner of love? What country is this love from? Who is this love from? Well, see, it's from a foreign country. It's from heaven, from God himself. So we're to see what great love or manner of love that who? Not God the Creator, but God the Father has lavished on us. The, NIV, uh, the King James Version says bestowed or give, and the NIV goes further. There's not a lot of basis for it, for them to use the word lavish, but I like it. Because that means you're just pouring it on like I poured gravy on my dressing and my mashed potatoes and my turkey. I just lavished it all over. There wasn't a spot that you didn't see gravy everywhere. And that's what God does with us. He lavishes His love on us. Not just God, but our Father lavishes that love on us. That we should be called what? Children of God. Are you starting to catch just a little of it? I, I hope so. Because I can't, um, I can't fathom that he would call me that. It blows me away that he would call me his very own child. I'm a wretched individual. But yet he loves me and he wants me to be his very own child. And that is what we are. The reason the world does not know us is they did not know him. Dear friends... King James Version says, Beloved. That means so much more there. So that's why I go back and forth sometimes so you can see this. Because friends don't tell me anything. But Beloved tells me I'm not only loved, I'm beloved. That God loves me as a father would love his child. So I stand in awe again. Beloved, <clears throat> now we are children of God. James has said it again. If you didn't catch it the first time, catch this. And what we will be has not yet been made known. But we know that when Christ appears, we shall be like him, for we shall see him as he is. All who have this hope in him purify themselves just as he is pure. So we're children of God now. When Jesus comes, we'll be even more like children of God because we'll be like him. So we need to strive for that now. And what does it say? That we need to purify ourselves just as he is pure. Children of God, what does that mean to you? I'm going to say it over and over, so hopefully it sinks in. Just, just a little, like I said, that's all we need. If you'll see throughout the bulletin, you'll see the crown that says, I am a child of God. You'll see a name tag that says, I am a child of God. Because you need to remember that every day you are God's child and nothing can change that. And you need to live that. I am ch a child of God now if I believe in Jesus Christ. I always will be a child of God, so how should I live this life? <clears throat> How can I do this though? Well, we can look back at last week. James chapter 4, verse 8 says, Come near to God, and he will come near to you. Wash your hands, you sinners, and purify, there's that same word again, your hearts, you double minded. And we, if you remember, we said double-minded was only used two times in James. It means that you're split in your decision, almost to the point of like a, a false identity, of not knowing what to do. I know what to do. That doesn't mean I do it. I am a child of God. If we keep remembering that, then maybe we won't be double-minded. Maybe we won't shift when, when trials and tribulations come our way. But maybe we'll give thanks in all of those circumstances. Maybe we'll resemble more like our Heavenly Father. Do you have this hope? I pray that all of you do. I pray that you know Jesus Christ. If you don't, then the first thing you need to do is get on your knees and ask God to save you through Jesus Christ, to change your ways, your, cha your thoughts. And He will come to you. If you come to Him, He will come to you. If you believe in Jesus Christ with your heart and profess with your mouth, you will be saved. You will be born again. You will be a child of God. Not that you might be. Not that you can obtain this through further works or anything. You will be a child of God. 
So are we living more like enemies of God or more like children of God? Even when John was still alive, Satan was working. He doesn't stop. That's why the video said that we're soldiers. And I remember one time when I was preaching, I got confronted afterwards that I don't like the soldier part. And I'm like, take it up with God then because it's there in His Word. Read it. We fight a spiritual battle. And Paul describes it with the Roman soldier's attire of that day. If you don't like the word soldiers, you need to look back in your Bible and see because we fight a spiritual battle. We need to always be on defense. If you put your guard down, there comes Satan in looking for that stronghold, for that foothold that he can get in your life. And then he'll keep on climbing. He'll keep on deceiving you. And he was doing that in the early church. And that's why John wrote this letter to tell them who they were in Christ, how much God loved them. So somebody couldn't come in and wipe the faith out by saying, no, you need to do this or you need to do that. or You've sinned too much now. You're not his child anymore. So John wrote this letter to bring about the acknowledgement of the people of that day in the church that we are God's children. That's who we are. That's who we will be. And that's who we should be today by living that life. Romans 8, starting in verse 12, it says, Therefore, brothers and sisters, the King James Version says, Brethren, we have an obligation. Well, we need to go back because we see the therefore. So we need to go back and see what Paul's talking about. So let's go back to verse 5. Those who live according to the flesh have their mind set on what the flesh desires. But those who live in accordance with the Spirit have their mind set on what the Spirit desires. Pretty self-explanatory, right? The mind governed by the flesh is death, but the mind governed by the Spirit is life and peace. The mind governed by the flesh is hostile to God. It is God's enemy. It does not submit to God's law, nor can it do so. Those who are in the realm of flesh cannot please God. You, however, you're a child of God. You're not in the realm of flesh, but are in the realm of the Spirit. If indeed... Uh-oh. That means, like I said before, I can call myself a car all day long, but it doesn't make me one, right? I can park in the garage. It still doesn't make me a car. I can go to church and not be saved. I can say I'm a Christian and still not know Jesus Christ as my personal Savior, let alone as my Lord. But if indeed the Spirit of God lives in you, and if anyone does not have the Spirit of God, plain and simple, they do not belong to Christ. There is no way to God except through Jesus Christ. He is the way, the truth, and the life. But if Christ is in you, then even though your body is subject to death because of sin, the Spirit gives life because of righteousness. And if the Spirit of Him who raised Jesus from the dead is living in you, He who raised Christ from the dead will also give life to your mortal bodies because of His Spirit who lives in you. Wow, hooray! That's why Paul says, therefore, so we can see what he says. Look at this. I, if I have Christ in me, then the Spirit of God lives within me. I can live a life free of sin, without its control and condemnation. And I, when I know when I die, when I pass from this life to the next, that I will spend eternity with Him because I am covered with the righteousness of Jesus Christ. Not mine, because I can never make it. But because of what Jesus did in my faith in Him, I will be I am, I always will be God's child. So therefore, brothers and sisters, we have an obligation. And it's not to the flesh to live according to it. Verse 13, for if you live according to the flesh, you will die. But if by the Spirit you put to death the misdeeds of the body, you will live. For those who are led by the Spirit of God are what? Children of God. Daughter of God, son of God. The spirit you received does not make you slaves so that you live in fear again. Rather, the spirit you received brought about your adoption to sonship. And by him we cry, Abba, Father. Dear Daddy, thank you. Thank you for loving me. Teach me, show me. The spirit himself testifies with our spirit that we are God's children. Don't let Satan deceive you. Now, if we are children, then we are heirs, heirs of God and co-heirs with Christ. Wait a minute, there's that word again, if indeed. 
Okay, maybe I can park in the garage and call myself a car. Maybe I can um, drink gasoline and put a horn on my head. Still not a car, am I? But if indeed we share in his sufferings in order that we may also share in his glory. Guess what? Life might not be easy. We've got it pretty easy, folks. We don't get persecuted for calling the name of Jesus. We might get mud thrown at us or, or expressive signs sent our way or something like that. But we're not going to have our heads chopped off for what we believe. So look at the opportunity that we have to tell others about Jesus Christ. When there are other people in this world who will not denounce Jesus Christ and watch them, their families get martyred in front of them, what does that say about our faith? We have so many good things that if we don't watch it, we're going to be in a love affair with the world. And we're going to be enemies of God rather than children of God. So Paul says, therefore again, here's what I think. I consider. The King James Version says, Paul reckons. I didn't know Paul was a good old southern boy, but I guess he is. Because it says, For I reckon that the sufferings of this present time are not worthy to be compared with the glory which shall be revealed in us. I reckon I'm going to have me some mashed taters with that gravy smothered all over the top of them. NIV says, I consider that our present sufferings are not worth comparing with the glory that will be revealed in us. There's no comparison whatsoever. There doesn't matter how much you do suffer, and we don't. It doesn't compare. Anything that you suffer in this earth does not compare to the future glory you would have. So you should be ready. You should not be ashamed. You should want to preach the gospel message to all that you can come to and tell them. Because that's the power that's going to save them. That's what's going to make the difference. <clears throat> Both the King James and the NIV say that it will be revealed in us. What does that mean to you? To me, it means that all creation is sitting there watching, seeing what's going on, bringing praise to God when someone comes to Him through Jesus Christ. And they're standing back at all saying, God is in control. We don't know His plans. We don't know the day that it's going to happen, but we know that He's going to defeat sin once and for all for His glory, for His honor. And look, these human beings get to be His children. They stand in amazement. And when that day is revealed, when we come to forever be with God as His children, it's going to be one massive party. But like I said before, when that day comes, there will be no more opportunity to tell your friend or your neighbor or your son or your parent about Jesus Christ. So we need to do that while we can, as if that day was going to be here tomorrow. Verse 19 says, For the creation waits in eager expectation for the children of God to be revealed. For the creation itself, in the beginning God created the heavens and the earth, right? And in Revelation it says there'll be a new heaven and a new earth. All of creation was subject to this frustration. Not by its own choice, but by the will of the one who subjected it. That the creation itself will be liberated from its bondage to decay and brought into the freedom and glory of the children of God. Are you getting a glimpse of what role we play in this cosmic battle? And we're being watched. Not only by God, but by other heavenly creatures. And they're rooting for us. They're rooting for us to say, give up that love affair with the world and realize who you are. You're a child of God. You are, you will be, and therefore you should realize it and live like it. Jesus has already won the victory. We don't have to do anything else except walk by faith rather than sight to start realizing who God is and that He loves us as the perfect Father loves His child. No matter how we are, whether you've gone out and, and you're feeding pigs in the slop, He's sitting there watching for you, watching for us to return because of the love the Father has for that son that's away. Or whether you're here right now and you're, you're doing all of the work of the Father, He loves you just the same. He loves His children 
And all you need to do is believe in Jesus Christ, repent, and turn your wicked ways. And say, take me, come to me, and he will come to you. Do you want to live as an enemy of God or a child of God? I want to close with another video that will just remind us in words and songs that we are children of God.